Hi, uh, welcome to another short video. In one of our last videos, we have talked about homogeneous functions. In this short video, we'll look at homothetic functions, uh, which are related functions. Um, in fact, homothetic functions are general, um, and homogeneous functions are a subset of homothetic functions. Therefore, they share the homothetic functions share the nice properties of uh, homogeneous functions. Um, but there are also some differences. For instance, um, homogeneous functions are cardinal in nature, whereas homothetic functions are ordinal. Um, so, in short, um, homogene homothetic functions are ordinal analog of homogeneous functions and homogeneous functions are a subset of homothetic functions. Maybe confused? Okay, we will, try, we will find out the difference quickly. Now, a formal definition of a uh, homothetic function. Let's say we have v of x. It's said to be homothetic if it's a monotonic transformation, gz, of a homogeneous function u of x. So, if we have a homogeneous function, which is u of x, such that this function is monotonically transformed by another function, then the function we get is known as homothetic function. Let's, let's take an example. Let's say we have u of x1, x2 is a homogeneous function such that it's equal to x times y. And we have a monotonic transformation function which is g of z, which is equal to z plus 1. Now, if we uh, insert this homogeneous function into this function, what we get is homothetic function v of x, which is equal to x, y, plus 1. Notice here, while here we started with a homogeneous function, after transforming it monotonically, we have a non-homogeneous function. And the new name for this new function is homothetic. Now, I will try to mention quickly uh, what monotonic transformation is, as well as cardinal versus ordinal. Uh, and also, uh, I will give some examples. Uh, exam uh, examples from Cobb-Douglas, the well-known uh, function in economics. But why, why do we need uh, homothetic functions? Uh, first of all, in production function, uh, where we still use homothetic functions, uh, we, we, we can say uh, homo homothetic functions are far more useful in utility or consumer uh, theory than in production th uh, uh, economics, because it's ordinal in nature. And why are economists interested in such um, uh, 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 functions? Simply because one of the main activities of economists is, is to recover, for example, in the case of utility theory, it's to recover the preferences of consumers. And normally, one is faced with limited data. And you, you, in, with, from this data, you, you, you have some evidence, some observations, and you know some of the uh, indifference curves of the consumer. Let's say there are two goods, x1 and x2, and you know from the data this uh, indifference curve, which is indifference curve 1. But there are many goods and many preferences the consumer 
might have. And it will be, with this limited data, difficult to know all indifference curves, all preferences of the uh, particular consumer. Therefore, as usual, economists uh, make some restrictions, some assumptions. And one of these, those assumptions is homothetic, which means if the preferences are homothetic, then knowing but from the limited data, knowing one of the indifference curves is enough to know all the remaining indifference curves. Because if we have a ray that passes through the origin and passes all these indifference curves, the intersection point of this ray and each indifference curve this tangent point, which is known as marginal rate of substitution, is constant. So, another way to define another way to define homothetic function is that if if a utility function in in, in case of uh, uh, utility functions, if a utility function uh, if a utility function has marginal rate of substitution of a uh, homogeneous Okay, let me put it another way. A utility function is homothetic if the marginal rate of substitution is homogeneous of degree zero. If the MRS is homogeneous of degree zero, which in other words means if it is constant, then we conclude that function is a homothetic function. So this is just the inverse of what we started with, which was a monotonically transformed homogeneous function is a homothetic function. This is the inverse, and it says if the MRS is homogeneous of degree zero, which means constant, then you, the utility function is a homothetic function. Now, back to the ordinal versus cardinal thing. Uh, first of all, in modern economics, utility uh, is considered an ordinal concept, which means, uh, now I quote the words of a well-known economist, Hal Varian, whose book I use uh, most uh, often, he says the only property of a utility assignment that is important is how it orders the bundles of goods. The magnitude of the utility function is only important in so far as it ranks the different consumption bundles. The size of the utility difference between any two consumption bundles doesn't matter. So, for example, if a consumer says, I prefer this bundle of commodities to that bundle of commodities, it is the ranking that matters. I prefer this to that, not how much. And how much is measured by a, a, a concept known as marginal utility. But, marginal utility, it's not that much important in itself. It's very important because in, 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 in calculating marginal rate of substitution. Now let's try uh, to take this example for example.
we know that marginal rate of substitution is equal to uh, the negative of marginal utility 1, marginal utility 2. The ratio of these two, and the negative sign is just an indication of if you, to, 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 to remain the same utility, then if you increase one of the, if you increase the consumption of one of those goods, then you have to decrease the consumption of one of the goods. And that's why there is a negative sign. That's just to indicate that you are balancing. You, in order to have the same utility throughout the time, and you are consuming two bundles, one and two, two goods, uh, one and two, then having more of a good means having less of another good. And that's just uh, why uh, this is negative. So, uh, a marginal rate of substitution, it measures the slope of the indifference curve that we have just seen in, te in, in, in the case of uh, consumer theory. And in the case of production theory, it measures the slope of the isoquantis. Uh, remember, when we were discussing homogeneous functions, we, we, we say, uh, Isoquants measure uh, the, uh, the, the, the proportion of outputs. Uh, if we have two outputs, for example, uh, that give us the same... Uh, sorry, uh, if, uh, if, if we have two inputs, the proportion of those inputs that give us the same output. So the concepts are related in different curves and in different uh, uh, isoquants but they are just uh, used in, in two different uh, theories, the consumer theory and production theory. Um, so in the case of uh, uh, utility, this is marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which a consumer is just willing to substitute a small amount of good two for good one. We have just to say. And a simple way to calculate this is uh, marginal utility of good one times change in that good plus marginal utility of good two times change in that good. It should give us change in utility, which in this case should be constant. And if it's constant, then change means zero. And this is why we have uh, uh, these MRS which is simply mean, uh, like we say, is a change in x2 divided by change in x1. Again, which leads to this uh, uh, formula. Uh, now, let's take an example. But before we take this example, I would like to, uh, because I have promised to say something about monotonic transformation, and it was part of our definition, I would like to say uh, what monotonic transformation is. Simply, uh, monotonic transformation, it's if you have uh, uh, two numbers, for example, if you have a number, if you have u1, and u2 such that u1 is greater than u uh, u1 is greater than u2, and if you transform this by a function f f of u1 and then f of u2, if this condition still if if the if the order of the numbers are preserved, then this is called monotonic transformation. Simply, it means the order of the numbers are preserved. Okay, uh, if we take two graphs, for example, a graph V, U, here we have this line, V is equal to F of U. Another graph, the same, U and V, but this time it's up and down. This is called monotonic transformation. It's always increasing. More is better. While here, it's sometimes more, sometimes less. And, and you see here, 
uh, if, if we take, for example, the rate of change, uh, again, the same numbers, if we have uh, uh, change in f, the function, and change in the numbers, this should always have the same sign. It should always be increasing or decreasing. And, and this can be proven by f of, this is equal to f of u2 minus f of u1. This is the rate of change of the numbers and the function that transforms the numbers. And then u2 minus u1. Remember, see here, always these two will have the same sign. That's why it's called monotonic transformation. Now let's go back to marginal rate of substitution and take quickly one example. Why marginal rate of substitution is of homogeneous of degree zero? Why it's always constant? And what matters is not the utility representation, but the, the ratio of the two goods. For example, let's say we have v of x1 and we don't have much time so I will take, I will jump off this and I will take Cobb-Douglas function as an example because I think it's more interesting. Let's see here this function which is Cobb-Douglas function u of x1, x2 is equal to uh, x c x1 c x2 d now marginal rate of substitution as we drive it but now in, cal in calculus terms it simply is minus the two marginal utilities which are partial derivatives divided by one another. It was marginal utility 1 di divided by marginal utility 2. So now we have d of u, this function, x1, x2, with respect to d of x1. First we take x1, then we divide this by d of, again the same, x1, x2, but now we take, because we are taking the marginal utility of x2 now, we take x2. Now see, if, if, we, if this was like, if, was, if there was t here, and there was another t here, these two t's would cancel. And that's why we say marginal rate of substitution is constant. And graphically, graphically, if we have all these indifference curves and we have a ray which passes through the origin, the slope here is just the same because the t's have just cancelled out. And that's why we say Cobb Douglas production function or utility function is homothetic function. Isn't, isn't that wonderful? Because, remember, it's, it's not uh, this, you know, calculations or the, the, you know, all these numbers that is important. What's important is what these numbers do for us. Back to the economics problem, economists make assumptions, and if you have this assumption of, and, it, and if it can be supported, then knowing one, knowing the shape of this, it's the same as knowing the shape of all of them. Thank you. I hope this was useful. Bye for now.